In this video, we are going to look back at glycolysis and review the important enzymes for most of the reactions. We are going to follow through a similar order that we went through the steps of the energy production. We will have all the products and substrates as a backdrop in order to relate them to what you already know from previous videos. Also, keep in mind that some of the words keep recurring and usually mean the same thing. For example, synthase usually means the creation of something and phosphorylase usually means the adding of a phosphate. So the first enzyme we're going to talk about is hexose kinase or hexokinase. Either spelling or pronunciation is correct. What's important about hexokinase is that it's used in two different reactions within our diagram. The first reaction is the breaking down of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. The second place that it is used is the conversion of fructose 1-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. The second initial enzyme that we will look at is the one that breaks down glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate, and that is glycogen phosphorylase. There is also an enzyme called glycogen synthase, which is a catalyst for the opposite reaction, that is, create glycogen from glucose 1-phosphate. The enzyme that converts fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is phosphofructokinase, or PFK. PFK is probably the most important enzyme of this whole process because it is what is called a rate-limiting enzyme. Because PFK is so important in this manner, it is used as a blood marker when drawing blood to give biologists an idea of how active glycolization is at the moment the blood is drawn. Aldolase is the enzyme that breaks apart the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into its two separate parts. If you recall, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate needs to be turned into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and the enzyme that is needed for this is TPI. The I stands for isomerase, which usually means changing the form without adding or subtracting any atoms to the molecules. A note about glycerol. Glycerol is a starting component of the process of turning carbohydrates into fat storage if the carbohydrates consumed by a person are not used. Glycerol is created from dihydroxyacetone phosphate. What is important about the enzyme TPI is that it can also facilitate the transformation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into dihydroxyacetone phosphate so that both products of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate are not wasted. The next few enzymes I will not read out, but merely show them to you to give an idea that every single reaction requires an enzyme to function at a useful speed. However, because none of these are rate-limiting enzymes like PFK, or starting enzymes like hexokinase and glycogen phosphorylase, we will not cover them as in-depth. The last important enzyme in this diagram is pyruvate kinase. This is somewhat obvious as to what it does because it is the last step on the path of creating pyruvate, but it is still quite important enough to mention. So these last steps are, once again, not necessarily a part of glycolysis or a part of the Krebs cycle, but they are all important steps that determine where the product of glycolysis goes. The enzyme responsible for turning pyruvate into lactate when oxygen is not present is lactate dehydrogenase. The enzyme responsible for turning pyruvate into acetyl-CoA when oxygen is present is pyruvate dehydrogenase. And the enzyme needed to convert pyruvate into oxaloacetate is pyruvate carboxylase. What you will need to know for the next class is where certain enzymes are used on this diagram and also how to spell some of the main enzymes mentioned, for example, phosphofructokinase, hexokinase, and glycogen phosphorylase.